Converge Church. Church, 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 Church
earth is still his footstool and the joy of the Lord is still our strength. Come on, I said the joy of the Lord is still our strength. Yeah.
good on you Try it on freedom in Jesus that's what we're talking about try it on and the Holy Spirit is in this room the presence is here Jesus is here and if you don't know him just lift your hands up your voice and they say gone oh gone are the chains that were holding me Gone is a person I used to be I'm free from the fear By your perfect love This is my exodus Come on, say it with me Gone are the chains that were holding me Gone is a person I used to be Free from the fear By your perfect love This is my This is my exodus yeah. Father God, we thank you that we are set free and we're freed indeed. Wow. God, we thank you for every lady in this house. God, we thank you that you are here, that you are working. And Father God, we are so blessed to be in your house and to be in your house with all the mothers, with all the ladies that are here. Father God, I pray that that you speak to them this morning, that you remind them that they are valued, that you remind them that they are loved, that you remind them that they are chosen, and that you remind them that they are yours. And Father God, we thank you for what you're doing in this house today. And then all God's people say, amen and amen. about to just drum off the stage and fall apart a minute ago. Awesome. Great job, worship team. We are so happy to have you. Shout out to all the ladies, the mothers, the mother figures, those who have mothers, those who have special women in their life who have led them. We welcome you. We love you. Um, before I forget, I just want to make sure you know that we have a special gift for you on your way out. So um, to all of our ladies, um, you are special to us. Um, to those who have been mother figures that uh, whether you've had challenges with it or with your own mother with being a mother being a mother and just it's a challenge sometimes in general so um, having the support system of all of you and being um, together as women we love you and we are just so thankful for you so um, welcome and to all of our Converge family thank you for joining us welcome um, to our Converge Nation who will be streaming online welcome to you as well if it's your first time with us, we are so glad that you came. Uh, we know there's a tons of churches around here. There's also a lot of online streaming these days. Um, so to come out and be here with us, we appreciate you. If it's your first time, please stop by our Connection Center after service. We have a little gift for you, our way of saying thank you for joining us. But we'd also like to just meet you, uh, get some information to make sure that you can stay connected with us on what's going on here at Converge. Um, other ways to, to stay connected with us um, is online, on social media. Um, so make sure you're following our handles um, at We Are Converge. It's at We Are Converge. Unless you're on TikTok, then it's Converge Church. So uh, make sure to follow us on those. There's a little different uh, content sometimes on different pieces. So don't assume just because you're following on Facebook that you're getting the full, the full spiel of uh, social media. So go out, follow us. Uh, last but not least for me is the reminder that it's graduation Sunday, May 15th. So for those who have, yes who have been putting in the work, um, the schoolwork, the studying. If you are a graduate or you have one, 
um, whether that's um, high school, college, um, whatever that is, let us know so that we can celebrate you on May 15th. Uh, we ask that you email admin at weareconverge.com uh, so that you can let us know uh, to prepare to celebrate for you. Please let us know by May 13th. That's Friday the 13th, if that's, that helps you remember it, um, just so that we can be prepared for you on the 15th. Thank you so much, Cassie. Guys, we are now moving into the Blessed Life segment of our worship experience. Yes, and that is our opportunity to help move forward the vision and the mission that God has given us at Converge. And one of the ways that we do that is in our giving. So if you would like to partner with us financially, we have multiple ways that you can do that. Here in person, our ushers are in the aisles with their envelopes. Just raise your hand, we'll get one to you. We ask that you would fill out the details in its entirety so that we can properly account for your giving. You can also give online safely and securely by visiting us at weareconverge.com forward slash give. And you can give via our mobile app. You just search the iOS and the Android platforms for Converge Church Plan and then you can also give via text. You text Converge Give along with a dollar amount to 77977. Thank you. Guys, we do appreciate everything that you guys do to help us provide life-giving, life-transforming ministry here at Converge. Let's just say a quick word of prayer. Father God, we come to you in the mighty, matchless, beautiful name of Jesus, and we thank you for the opportunity that you have given us to sow into your kingdom. We thank you for each family, each hand, each heart that has sown into this good ground here at Converge. We pray blessings upon those that give, God, those that are faithful, Father, and those who have a heart to give, Father God, but just are not at that point. We pray an extra special blessing for those families, Father God, because we know it's in their heart to do it, Father. We love you and we thank you for how you always provide for us, for how you are our source, for how every good and perfect gift, including financial gifts, Father, comes from you. We pray that we would use it to glorify you, to magnify you, to honor you, to share your word with the lost and the hurting, that we would lift you up and then that you would draw all men unto you. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. Enjoy the rest of this Mother's Day worship experience. It's Mother's Day, a time to celebrate all the wonderful mothers out there not just for being shining examples of how great a mom can be, but also for being beautiful reflections of who God is. Like God, you've provided for us. You've shown us how much you care from the very beginning. With God, you've guided us, helping us navigate through every decision, big or small. You've been patient with us, helping us grow and learn from the mistakes we make. And like God, you forgive us, offering us grace so those mistakes can never define us. You've been present. It sounds so simple, but it's so important just knowing you're there when we need you. And most of all, You've loved us unconditionally as only someone filled with God's love could. So today we thank you, moms, for all of this and so much more. Happy Mother's Day. They've 
something to remember so they won't forget I was here I lived I loved I was here I did I've done everything that I wanted and it was more than I thought it would be I will leave my mark so Well, let's give a great rounding applause to Veronica. Thank you, Veronica, for that. That was my dedication, part of my dedication to all of the mothers, all of the women, all of the people here. We are so excited. Veronica, you really sang that. For those of you who may not be familiar with that song, that was actually written by Diana Krall for Beyonce to sing at the 2012 World Humanitarian Day. And I just thought it was so fitting with the message I wanted to share. Uh, we're gonna get into that in just a little bit, but I want you to keep that song uh, in your mind. And one thing that we always do for Mother's Day, I'm, I'm very sensitive about Mother's Day, even though I'm a mother. There are women in my life that I have loved and continue to love that for one reason or another were not, are not mothers. And for some people, they're okay, that was their choice. For others, it is absolutely devastating. And so, since we started in ministry, I have always been very sensitive. I have children, I don't know why that is so emotional for me, 
for people who struggle in that area. So if you're not a mom, you are not less than. If you have, didn't have a good mother, I'm so sorry. If you wanted to be a mother or want to be a mother and it just hasn't happened the way you thought it would be, I want you to know your life still counts. I also want you to know that God is not punishing you. And I want you to know that if you just hang to the end of this message, you will see yourself. And the reason why I'm sensitive, when I was a children's past pastor, uh, I had a, a very good friend who was then in her 60s, and she came to serve with me in children's ministry. And she told me, do you, she said, I just want you to know this is the first time I've been to church on Mother's Day in 10 years. And she said, my mom wasn't good, and then I made some choices in my before Jesus life that didn't qualify me to be a mother and it has been very difficult. And I've always held that thing in my heart. So I always start Mother's Day messages off with a little prayer for those who may be feeling an emptiness. If you're joining us online and you're just scrolling through and you're like, Ugh, I've seen all the cars, I'm sick of it. We're praying for you this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this opportunity. And Lord, I lift up those ladies who, who just feel an emptiness. And not maybe an emptiness in you, but an emptiness because of an expectation of society. Or maybe words from family members or friends. And Lord, I lift them up. Your word says that you would be near to the brokenhearted. So for those who feel that emptiness, Lord, I pray by your grace that you would fill them to overflowing and that their self-worth would not be found in children or no children, but they would find themselves loved by you. Oh Lord, for those who didn't have a good mother, Lord, I just pray that your grace washes over them and that you would send somebody in their life to help fill that void. For those who are struggling with the ability to have children, Lord, I thank you that your grace is sufficient and that you are still a miracle worker. Lord, we ask that you just cover this service. We invite your Holy Spirit to sit and stay with us, Lord Jesus. And we will be careful when it's all said and done today to give you and you alone all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Amen. 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 Well, I am so excited to see everyone. I am going to just take my... Mother's Day liberties and uh, do a few little things before we actually get started into the message. Again, thank you, Veronica, for that wonderful, wonderful uh, rendition. I was here. And so happy Mother's Day to all of our moms. But I'm going to give, yes, if you are a mom, we do celebrate you, though we recognize we get the other, you know, we want to take care of that first. But the Bible says, says give honor to whom honor is due and so i am going to do that right now so mother mary shade could you please come to the stage <laughs> and so we have some very special mothers in the house the bible says that the older shall teach the younger and you can come down here with andrea for those of you online you may not be able to see mother mary mother mary are you comfortable in coming on the stage or would you rather stay down okay well we just wanted i just wanted to bless you and honor you and thank you for being as we would say where i come from a mother of the house we love you we thank you for your support and people don't know this, but just about every couple weeks or every month, we get a little something from you in the mail. She'll, you send it to the church office, and I want you to know that it is never missed. We know that you are praying for us. We are grateful and honored by your commitment to God through Converge Church. We love you so much. We are glad you are here, and we just wanted to say Happy Mother's Day to you. Yeah. Mother Jean St. James, could you come on up? Mama Jean, as I call her. Now, Mother Jean actually belongs to Tammy Pleasant, who's our women's ministry director. And Mother Jean, for probably, has it been five years now? I receive a text from her every single morning, 365 days of the year of encouragement 
of prayers. You're here with us. Before you were here with us, you were praying for us. She she is that mother that when I just don't need to say it out of my mouth, I will send her a text and say, can you pray? She never asks a question, but she prays. And I thank you for that encouragement. Even the days I don't get to you, I read it every single day. And I love you and I thank you for the gift that you are to me personally, but to Converge. Thank you. And then is Mother Sarah here? Are you here, Chanita? Is Chanita here? Did anybody see Chanita today? Okay, Mother Sarah has not been feeling well. We went by the house last week, and so we prayed for her. And so we're expecting God to do some great things in her life, and he is doing that. But we have something for her. We can drop it off because they live in McKinney also. Now, I do have a special mother, which is my mama. And I promised her that I would not make her stand and I would not make her say anything. I told her, I'll let you sit on the front row and I won't make you stand. And so she is not gonna stand, but I called Andre and I said, Andre, I need you to play my delivery person for my mother. Because without Georgia DeLois, I would not be. <laughs> God knows what he was doing when he gave me to her. And uh, Ma, I just want to say. You have been everything a mother is supposed to be tailor-made for me. You have let me be Wendy, and you have celebrated. You have not always agreed, but you have loved me. I have seen the fight from Harvest Lane all the way to Presby Hospital. I love you. I admire you. And I'm so proud you are mine. That lump of sugar is a two-time breast cancer survivor. Yes. Excuse me for a minute. We have one more presentation oh. we would like to make. <laughs> On behalf of the brothers. Oh, my goodness. To the mother of this house. just want to say uh, I've known Pastor Ray and Wendy for many years and I can say that she has been consistent in her love for God her, her love for her husband her love for her family and her love for her church family she is truly an example that we can all uh, follow and uh, we just want to say give you this small token of our appreciation it's a plant that you can keep throughout the year and water it and nurture it like you do us all the time and uh, we love you, and happy Mother's Day. Thank you, thank you so much. All right, last but not least, where is Levi Lafayette and Nia Kennedy? Come to the stage. Quick, 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 quick. I know Nia produces our services in-house and for online, so I'm sorry for upsetting the apple cart come on up the steps, but these are the unsung heroes of my motherhood. So we always talk, Daddy and I talk about you, and we send shout outs. Neil went to prom last night. Cree did her makeup and her hair, and when she walked in the house, I had a flash of Ray putting her in the car seat 18 years ago. And so I've been crying all weekend. I've been, and, and I'm just at a loss for words. But I told her yesterday, you have made the past 18 years a joy. Yeah, yeah. 
You have never been disrespectful. Your teachers have always spoken very highly of you. You have been a hard worker. Because of who you are, I can't take all the credit. You get that part of that from your grandmother as well and your auntie. And I can bless you and send you to college knowing that Jesus is in your heart and you are a woman of wisdom. And so I do that even though you're not leaving the house today. I bless you, Nia Kennedy Harmon. The Lord before you and whoever is against you, whatever tongue rises against you, the Lord will be your great defense. I want you to continue to trust God. I want you to know that if mommy never lived another day that you made it worth this life. I'm gonna live some more days though. But I'm just saying, it just sounded real good in the moment. I want you to know that I place an expectation on you to be that woman that you always have been, to have drive, to know what you want, to be an advocate for yourself. I trust you to trust God because it was in your grandmother first and in your mama and it will live on in you. I thank you that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I thank you that no accident or incident would take you out before your time. I thank God that with long life will he satisfy you. I thank you that Emerson will be changed because you were there. I thank you that the Holy Spirit goes before you. I thank God that the Holy Spirit goes before you to tread out a path. It will not be easy, but it will be worth it if you trust him. Trusting him doesn't always come with benefits. It comes with a whole lot of little bit of struggle. But if you trust him, he will be faithful. I want you to know that if I had a pen and a paper to write out what I wanted in a daughter, you have exceeded every expectation. I love you. I'm proud of you. And go get that money so you can pay me back. <laughs> Levi Lafayette. Before there was a Nia, there was a promise that I would have a son. And so when I got pregnant with your sister, I thought she was going to be a boy. Nia is mommy's gift. Levi is mommy's promise. I am so proud of you, even at 12 years old. I admire the way you carry yourself. Your wife is going to love me so much because she's going to think that I had something to do with all of this greatness but you came to me great. You carry your grandfather's name and the Pape's name and Granddaddy Levi's name and the Harmon name. Your life lets me know how favored I am of God because he would crown me with the opportunity to bear a man child for this generation. I place an expectation on you, Levi Lafayette, that you will trust God even when you don't agree with mommy and daddy, that you will always find peace in being a gentleman. That when this world wants you to be roguish and mannish and thuggish and all the issues that the world wants you to be, that you would have confidence that Levi Lafayette is a gentleman. You come from a long line of gentlemen. I expect you to carry it on. I expect you to be just as much of a gentleman at 50 as you are at 12. I bless you, Levi Lafayette. You are the most beautiful promise that I could have ever received outside of salvation. I love you. I'm proud to be your mother. And you know I will fight somebody in the street if they do something to you. I love you. I did that twofold. One, to bless my children because they, they sit in the back and they serve to let them know. I wanted them to hear publicly what we tell them privately. And I also want to be an example to you. You don't have to be in ministry. You don't have to, to, to be, you don't have to have a mic. You have the power to bless your children. 
If you don't have the ch your ch children, you have the power to bless co-workers. You have the power to speak life. And so mothers, start that now. Just speak the life of God over them. Nia had a tantrum when she was two, but I was a school teacher 10 years before I had a baby, so I'd had a couple of child psychology classes. So she fell out. Well, I come from a long line of belt whoopers, but Pastor Ray does not. And so when she fell out, I was like, we don't even really do it like that from where I'm from. I'm like, where is the belt? But she was too. So I just walked over her body and I let my big toe graze her belly. And I turned around and I said, oh God, I thank you that Nia carries the peace of God, that she has a quiet and gentle spirit and great is her peace. And I went in the kitchen speaking life. So a few weeks later, I guess she said the first one didn't work, so let me try it again. So she fell out again and again. And the reason why I stepped over her is for her to feel my presence. So I stepped over her again. And I turned to her. I said, oh, God, I thank you for Nia Kennedy. I thank you that she has a, a quiet and gentle spirit and great is her peace in Jesus' name. And I went in the kitchen. Nia has never fallen out again. So I'm not telling you anything that I haven't, when I share with you today, it's not something that I pulled out of the sky. We're just regular old people. We love God, but we're just regular, so we are not a perfect family. But speaking life into her, I learned that in Bible school. And so I could have matched that energy with some energy, and we would probably be fighting to this day. But I'm like, I'm the mama. I don't need her to validate that I'm the mama, so I'm going to step in my mama godly authority and speak life over her. I wanted to speak into her what I wanted to see. And because she came to us peaceful, those were prayers I prayed before she got here. She was two weeks old and slept through the night. Like we would be checking on her to make sure she was still breathing. So when she got two, you know, two-year-olds, they just are of another spirit. She just thought she was going to try me, and I just let her know we're not having that up in here. And so... Here it is. My children are not perfect. They have seen a lot of my mistakes, but they know God for themselves. That is one thing I can say Ray and I have been able to, to, to do well. You have been a part of their growth. They have seen you trust God. They've seen you overcome struggles. They've seen you excel and do great. So the greatness that we see in Nia and Levi is a shared collective greatness from Bree and Cree, her first babysitters, to all of you who know her. Even Tanisia, Patrick's wife, would be calling me from track meets. She would say, Pastor Wendy, I don't see you, but I'm here. Nia's here. You need anything? You want me to check on her? and that type of community that we've received from you all. And so we just thank you. Now I'm going to get into the message finally. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Let me say a quick prayer because I need to get back on track. Oh, God, I thank you according to Psalm 119 and 130. The entrance of your word giveth life. And so, Lord, I submit my will. I submit uh, my personality, I submit my way of doing things, and I thank you that you have a word for your people. I love you so much, Jesus, and I thank you that today is a really good day because it is the day that you have made. We welcome you in. Speak through me, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. So what I wanted to come and speak to you about today, um, the title is Wake. We leave a lasting legacy. That's why I had Veronica ask her to sing that song, I Was Here. Now you can see that a wake, the definition of a wake is that trail of water. It, thank you. A wake is the disturbed water behind a passing vessel. Everyone say, I'm the vessel. The disturbed water behind a passing vessel in water, the aftermath of rippling waves behind a vessel, boat, or ship. Everyone say, I'm the vessel. Showing evidence of passing through. The path left by a storm, physical evidence that the storm has passed through. So the wake, it can also be, it can be that parted water or it can be a storm. You know, a storm really doesn't leave behind things that are great. And so today I present to you 
What kind of wake do you want to be? Now, I have come to cause a disturbance. I wish I had a flowery, beautiful, hummingbird singing type of Mother's Day message, but mm -mm, I ain't come for that. I came to challenge you, and you don't have to be a mother. I came to challenge you in thinking about what will my life say? When people talk about you, what are they saying? And I'm not talking about that social media, you know, when people talk about you, mm -mm. we're on the positive side. When people mention your name, are you leaving a trail behind you that shows of God's goodness, that shows of your grace? Or is it like a storm just leaving destruction? If it is a trail of destruction, guess what? You are still here among the living. You have an opportunity to get, right, get it right, and we didn't come to judge you. But I want you to think about what will my life say? Wake. Wake. Now be aware, wherever you go, whatever you do, you are creating a trail behind you. You are creating a wake. Is that going to be something that you're going to be proud of? And I think I'm a little bit in this rhythm is because it's been a tough season. The month of March, we, we saw a lot of people go home to be with the Lord. And so this has been on the forefront of my mind. Also with Nia getting ready to leave for college, I am asking myself the question, how have I been in her life that she can succeed in life without me being present? I think I've gotten myself mixed up. Okay, thank you, thank you. I was making notes yesterday. This is what I've done. I added notes to the notes I send to Jewel. So Jewel, thank you for keeping me on track. Let's look at Deuteronomy 12, 28. I'm gonna read to you out of the New King James Version. You can follow along. Most of the scriptures that I have, uh, I'm gonna give you two versions, one from the New King James and also from the message. Just so if you're here for the first time, my primary expression in ministry is evangelism. And so I'm, but we are mostly a teaching house. So I'm trying not to wah, get saved and go to heaven and then just teach the Mother's Day message. So if you see me hopscotching back and forth, that's just because I'm just fighting with Wendy on the inside. But it's all right because I came to create a disturbance in the name of Jesus. So Deuteronomy 12, 28 says this, observe and obey all these words which I command you. This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel, that it may go well with you and your children after you forever. When you do what is good and right in the sight of the Lord your God. So if I had to have a foundational scripture today, that would be it. Deuteronomy 12, 28. Let's look at it from the message translation. It says, be vigilant. Listen obediently to these words that I command you so that you'll have a good life, you and your children, for a long, long time, doing what is good and right in the eyes of the Lord your God. So as mothers, because I'm going to speak to the mothers, but you'll find yourself here, hopefully, even if you aren't a mother. As mothers, the number one responsibility we have is to point our children to God. That should not be an optional situation for them. You don't have to browbeat them, but how you live, they will follow. So if you love the Lord your God first, and then you introduce your children to God, then it allows them an opportunity to follow God. Why do you want them to follow God? Because when they aren't following you, they will at least have a moral compass, some structure to dictate what they will do, the decisions that they make. As God-ordained mothers, we are called to and challenged to, above all else, guide our children to know God and have faith in him. Not just know him, but to have faith in him as well. In introducing your children to God, the creator, it can cause a disturbance. So sorry, Nia, to put your business out in the street, but I don't know anybody else's, so I'm just going there, but I love you. Nia went to prom last night. 
So I'm not going to tell you what time she got home this morning. <laughs> so you should have seen her. I was putting on my makeup. And me, I'm just painting a picture for the people. Oh, Cree, you should have seen. She had the eyelashes still on. She had washed the makeup off, but the one eyelash was up here and one was hanging down here. And she said, do I have to go to church today? I said, did you call Miss Jewel? Do you have somebody in your place to produce? And she said, oh, no, I forgot. I said, had you done that, then no, you wouldn't have to go to church. But we can't upset the entire service because we didn't plan, okay? So I'm just going to need you. You drive your car. You don't even have to go to lunch with us. You can go home and you can sleep. I know you don't have any homework and you can just get ready for tomorrow. And she said, yes, ma'am. That's causing a disturbance. Yes, yes, See, I don't really, I wanted to tell her, oh, baby, you can stay home, but she's leaving in August. I wanted her to know when she wake up with crooked eyelashes on and she got to go to work, guess what? You got to either glue them back down or take them off and just make it to work, sis. It wasn't about service. It's not about her being in church, but I am called as a mother to create a disturbance. I am not called to be her friend. And I want her to like me, but I want her to love God more. And I want her to live long enough that she can see, oh, my mama wasn't so mean after all. And so as a mother, what we're called to do is just lead them in the way they should go. She can't show up at nobody's job with some crooked eyelashes on talking about, do I have to come to work today? Don't nobody even want to hear that. But she is ours and she's safe. And by the time she washed her face, she had her brother ironing her shirt. I mean, this was a whole family affair to get out of the house. And she is here and I appreciate it. And it wasn't a fight. Because at two, I said, oh God, I thank you that she's got a calm and gentle spirit and great is her peace. So at 18, I don't have to have pushback. She's not standing flip foot in our house talking about, well, I'm growing, I could do what I want to. Because at two, I was declaring over her but she's also seen me live it. You should have seen the hot mess I looked yesterday in front of her prom day and his family. Everybody looked so cute. And you know, I hadn't planned out and she was pretty much together. Cree had done her makeup and everything, but we were working on the house. My hair is natural and it's gray, which is of her own spirit of itself. So I, I had on like this tennis skirt and casual and everybody was dressed up for pictures. So I ran back upstairs. When you're running up and down the stairs in Texas humidity and your hair is natural, this side right here looked like it wanted to be a little bit of Frederick Douglass. And this side right here was trying to lay down like Jessica Parker, but it really wasn't making it. And back here was just along for the ride. So I took the tennis skirt off and I went and put on a navy blue jumpsuit because McKinney High's colors are navy and gold. But just, just a little cleavage. We were with two of the fathers and just the girls were trying to say, hey, we going to prom. So then I ran back upstairs to change clothes again and I came back downstairs with another. My mom was like, how many times are you going to change clothes? I'm like, I just got to get it right. So I had on these really big frames that I just got and they just are just white like cat eyes. My hair is a mess and it's fuzzy. I have on a third outfit, but guess what y'all? I was standing for the pictures because it wasn't about me. I wasn't going to the prom. So when you just make it happen, when I tell her this morning, I lift my eyebrows up so she wouldn't be offended and think that I was mad. I was like, mm -hmm, sis, you got to go to church. But she watches me push through. And when I have to make it not about me. And I wasn't even going to be embarrassed because guess what? She looked spectacular. She went with the best guy she would had ever come to. This is a little side note. When somebody asks your daughter to the prom, be willing to take his family out to lunch and sit a little spell and see who's going to be in the car with your daughter. Because we still had a couple of weeks left that I could have repossessed our yes and made it a no. And so we did. We took them to Haywire, y'all. And we sat. We met at 12. We were still there at 4. That's just how good of a, a, a set of parents that are in the young man. So me releasing her yesterday, it was nothing. That has nothing to do with my message, but that was causing a disturbance. Cause she, you know, your mom would say, oh, let, let's meet him. But it really wasn't me, it was daddy was like, I wanna meet him. 
I want to see what it is, what it looked like, what is going on. So yesterday we had nice refreshments for them. I always try to place my children in a spot of favor with people that have their lives in their hands. You will never catch me going up to a school, getting a teacher told in an ugly way. I get them told with my eyebrows up in a nicely edited email. And I will just, oh, let me tell you this story. Okay. <laughs> I created disturbance. Y'all. Okay, so boom, this is what happened. Levi comes home from school one day and he is like all upset. He still has his backpack on. He is like, ooh, daddy, when I was at school today, the kids were asking me, have you been called to the principal's office yet? I was like, no, why would I be called to the principal's office? They said, little sugar over here said, y'all been sending new pictures back and forth. And so they didn't call me to the, the, to the office yet. So daddy says go tell your mama he comes downstairs to tell me mama i was at school today and the girl said i was taking some pictures i said get your phone right now where is my phone so i'm calling mckinney isd i didn't have my eyes my eyebrows raised when i dialed the number but i got him up when he answered the phone so i called the counselor and i said hello sir this is levi Harmon's mother this is wendy Harmon." and levi came home with some very disturbing news he said somebody said that he has been exchanging Naked pictures, and that is a criminal offense, and I just want to know what was going on. He says to me, oh, yes, Ms. Harmon, we have an open investigation. I said, wait, wait, hold on, let me put you on speakerphone, and I did not lift my eyebrows up. I'm like, you have an open investigation on my 12-year-old son about some nude pictures, and ain't nobody called, texted, or emailed me? He said, well, what, uh, was <laughs> no, because I put it on speaker because this is grace. This is truth. This is good cop. This is ghetto mama. Let we could just fight right our own side of the church. You know, I'm like all about that life in my mind. But, I, you know, and I'm talking it because I have not even fought anybody since the sixth grade. But I'm just like ready. These hands will be ready because I'm just like, are we going to Fabian Middle School is about to be harming resources. You're, you have an open investigation on my son and nobody has called us. And so he says, we're gonna bring Levi in tomorrow. I have never in 23 years heard your pastor raise his voice. Ray Harmon says, you will not meet with my son without our presence. We will be there first thing in the morning. Good day, sir. And I was like, well, okay, sir, I'm still here. <laughs> he's, he's gone. And so what I want to know is, sir, what we need to do. I'm glad I called you. I would have appreciated if so, because now I'm kind of nervous, but I'm like, ooh, that was my man. He was like, we're going to be there in the morning. We're going to be there in the morning. Yeah. I'm going to have my camouflage on and we gonna make it happen so sorry converge but we gotta protect Levi Lafayette so guess what I do the very next day I put on a full face of makeup I hadn't gotten my contacts yet so I still have my glasses on I put on a full powder blue power suit with a nice Tory Burch t-shirt under it and just some nice uh, uh, white canvas shoes just in case we were gonna have to go down but Remember, always creating a disturbance. Why am I doing that? Before we went to the school, though, we had asked Levi, Levi, is there anything we need to know before we go up to that school? Because what I would be delusional to think is that my kids can't get into any trouble. I would be delusional to think that this internet and YouTube and Streaming TV has not exposed them to some things that I don't want them to be exposed to. So I was just like, Levi, are you sure? So I asked one time. Ray said like five times. Now, when we go up to that school, right, they're not going to tell us anything. I was in the kitchen. Ray was talking to Levi. And I could see Levi was laying on the ottoman. And I saw his eyes. I'm over here. Look up at Ray and not even blink. He said, Daddy, I haven't done anything inappropriate. And I said, we're going with receipts. Give me that cell phone. Unlock it right now. Go to her name. And we scrolled and looked, and it was nothing. They had one little goofy picture from the, from the cafeteria. And she was sitting far away. So when I go up to the school, 
We have the phone. She had even bought him a nice little teddy bear for Valentine's Day, girls. I took her teddy bear back. Because I wanted her to know, we don't even want nothing from you. You lying on folk over here. So I go in there, and we go through the phone, and they said, well, we've asked other children. It wasn't supposed to be talked about. And I said, but it's being talked about. See, if you don't know this, if, if children are showing nude pictures, that is considered a, a sexual offense. They can be listed as a sex offender on the registry. So this wasn't a just, I'm just going up to the school. This is like, no. The Harmon kids know that they will be in trouble if they are not conducting themselves. Respect for peers and adults is minimum standard for the Harmons. We never use the language with our children, your pastor's kids. We say we are the Harmons and this is how we do it here. And so we went up to the school to advocate for Levi, number one, for him to show, to see how to be an advocate for himself. Number two, to serve the school notice. If anything go on with that one, you need to let us know because we're going to be here in blue suits and tennis shoes. But I don't go up acting ignorant. You know why? It's because when I leave that school, they will have my child in their presence day in and day out, a lot much longer than I have him. And so never as a parent go up and set it off. You can set it off with your eyebrows up and let them know, but remember you always want to place your children in a position of favor when they have to be in the presence of other people. All right, so wake, leaving a legacy. I'm back. <laughs> Leaving a legacy, how? How do I leave this legacy? Where do I start? Some of you have newborns, some of you have toddlers, some of you, your kids are, are grown and they may be gone, but you can still leave a legacy for them. It's not too late. How do I do this? Well, I borrowed this from our city church days. For those of you that are new to Converge, when we started our ministry, it was called City Church. And in 2020, we did a complete rebranding. We are now Converge Church. But a part of our uh, DNA as City Church was raise resource release. And so this is like three sermons in one. And so wake, leave a lasting legacy. How do you do that? Raise resource release. Raise is to lift or move. Uh -uh, we went to go back to raise. There it is. Raise, lift or move to a higher position. So when you're bringing your children up, our responsibility as parents is to lift or move them to a higher position or level to construct, build, bring up, to grow. Now, there are some people from the school of thought that don't like to say that you raise children. I heard somebody tell me one time, you raise cattle, you rear children, but I can't prepare. So rear, if raise is not a good word for you, to rear means to bring up and care for, and I put in parentheses, a child until they are fully grown, especially in a particular manner, the church, the way of God, or a place. Now, you don't have to be in the building to live a godly life. Being in the building is an outflow of your love for Christ if you can make it. And we are called to, as parents, as mothers especially, to raise our children up in the Word of God. Proverbs 22 and 6 in the New King James Version says this. It says, um, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The message translation says, point your kids in the right direction. When they are old, they won't be lost. Notice it says, point your children in the right direction, and when they are old, they won't be lost. Point them in the right direction, and when they are old, all this in the middle can be a lot of peanut butter river. It can be a lot of foolishness and mayhem. You point them in the right direction 
and when they are old, they are not lost. You continue to point them in the right direction even as they get older, but don't let what's happening in the middle say to you, oh my goodness, I wasn't a good parent. Unless you were an abusive, neglectful parent, and even if you were that, you can reprint and make it right. But unless you've done that, please, I'm probably a little ahead of myself, never allow your children's behavior to determine your goodness or how you've been bad. If you're a mom, I want you to take your hand, put it on your chest, close your eyes. Say, Lord, help me to never allow my children's behavior to indicate how good or not so good of a parent I am. I'm going to say it one last time. Never allow your children's behavior to dictate to you if you've been a good parent. You point them in the right direction. It is the law of seed, time, harvest. You point them in the right direction. It takes some time before you'll see that growth and maturity. You don't ever just throw up your hands and say, there's nothing I could do with you. Well, in the kitchen, you can throw up your hands and say, I don't know what to do with you. But then you take it to the prayer closet and you tell the Lord, I don't know what to do with them. God, you made me a promise. See, when we look to the word, this whole church Bible follow God thing, it's not about to give you one more thing to do. It is not about you bringing your offering. It is not about being a social club and serving. It is about empowering you to have the best life that you can have. And when you don't know what to do, when you trust God and you've pointed your children to trust God, then you can say, God, I'm depending on you to bring it home. God, I'm depending on you for their to be a harvest. God, forgive me for my mistakes because none of us are perfect. Help me, Lord. But I want to set you free. It is seed, pointing them in the right direction, time, then the harvest. And I think when we accept that, we can take some pressure off of ourselves. You don't have to even take my word for it. You can look it up in the Bible. In Luke 15, the 11th through the 32nd verses, we have the story of the prodigal son. So I want to give you an example. I didn't put list the scriptures out because they're here for you. You can just uh, take notes of, on it. But this is what happened with the prodigal son. He is at home with his dad and he's like, mm, it's about to be Mardi Gras. And I want to just have some fun. So, Daddy, can I have my inheritance now, even while you're still living? Because I just want to go do things my way. And guess what the father says? The father says, mm -hmm, you can have it your way. And so the son goes out. It's in Luke 15. And he is spending money on women. Yes, doing unrighteous things. He's being the big baller. All the friends are coming. They're spending money. They're having such a good time. And one day he wakes up and he is broke. So all of the women are gone. All of the friends are gone. And all of the money is gone. And he's Jewish. So he asks the farmer, can I work on your farm? I can just work with your pigs. You know, Jews don't fool with pigs. And so he's working with the pigs and he's like, oh, I cannot. This is what he's telling himself. I cannot go back to my father's house. I've spent my inheritance. I will look silly if I go back. But I was having such a good time at my dad's house. I was always provided for. And now I'm eating with pigs. And then he just had one moment of clarity. Hmm. What if I just go tell my dad, okay, dad, I know I messed up. I'll just be a servant in your house, but I just really don't like it out here in the streets no more. So if you could just let me come back, I'll just serve. Parenting. The dad was a good dad, but did the son still go out? Yes. That is why you cannot allow your children's behavior to dictate whether you are a good parent or not, because we are free will people. So when the son decides to come home, the entire time he's been gone, the daddy every day is looking up the road for the son. He doesn't see him. He goes about his business. Every day he's looking up the road. Every day he's praying, Lord, bring my son back home. The only prayer could have drawn him. That just don't happen by coincidence. That is not the universe and the, the energies and the manifestations lining up with the stars and the circles. Mm -mm. 
That was prayer. So when the father sees the son, he didn't sit back and light his pipe and say, "Mm mm-hmm, here he come now. Look at old raggedy self, all stinky. Yeah, come come on and come on and ask me. I'm going to let you back in, but just come on and beg me a little bit so you'll know that what I said was right. Mm Mm-mm. The father grabbed a robe and he grabbed a ring and he took off running down the road to meet the son. In Bible school, we would say that was a picture of our relationship with God. Seed time harvest. Point him in the right direction and when he's old, he'll not be lost. But that which lieth in the middle So the son goes, he says, oh, he falls at his father's feet. Oh, dad, I will just be a servant in your house. You were right. I should have never been messing with Kiki them. They ain't even nothing out there. They were with me when I was rich and then I was broke. Everybody disappeared and I was having to feed these pigs and I was eating the pigs. The father was like, "Mm mm-mm. Picks him up by his chin. You are my son. He placed a robe on him restoration, protection. You know what the robe did? It covered all the shame that he was carrying. Then he places the ring on his finger. You belong to us. Nobody can talk about you. And so when the son goes back, the father says, let's have a big, big party. At another time, maybe Bible study, I'll teach you about the brother. Because you'd have thought the brother would be like, hey, you're home. The brother was like, dude, what's up? I've been here the whole time. This joker out here running the streets and you're going to have a party. That's how much God loves us. And that's the love we're called to with our children. Notice the story does not say that the daddy was in the streets day and night looking for his son, though there is nothing wrong with that. When people make choices, it is healthy and necessary to have very strong boundaries. And when they come to themselves as Christ followers, what we are to do is put a robe and a ring on them and say, come on back home. Always leave the back door open. You can get you a screen door and just have it locked and you can talk through the screen door if you need to have a boundary, but just always let them know, yep, we can talk about it and you can come home. And so that is a part, again, of our responsibility as Christ followers as well. Yes, I've gone to that part. Okay, let's look at Deuteronomy 6, 6 through 9 in the New King James Version. And it says, and these words which I command you today shall be on your heart. So everyone say, it starts with me. They shall be, they shall be on your heart. Verse 7, you shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them, these are the ways of God, the laws of God, the commandments of God, as a sign on your hand, that's Jewish culture, we are Gentiles, and they shall be frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house. So what the scripture is saying is it starts with you. When you have the word of God in your heart, then you just naturally out of the outflow, you don't wait till the weekend service to talk about it. When your kids come home and say, oh, somebody was teasing me today. And you say, what did somebody say? And they'll tell you, somebody said this. Or you say, somebody was not telling the truth. Let's pray for them. Maybe they're having a bad day at home. So you're talking about the things of God and the ways of God is not exclusive to Sunday service church or children's church. It is just how you do life. When they are believing for their ideal college and you've filled out the applications and you look at how much it costs and you're like, okay, we didn't save for that amount, then guess what you do? You teach your children to pray. Nia, on her 15th birthday, she asked Ray and I at dinner, oh, for my 16th birthday, can I go to Paris? I was like, can you believe to go to Paris? She said, yes, ma'am. That was January 25th. By September, we have not made any arrangements to go to Paris. But one particular weekend, and I would check with her. She had a little shoebox in her closet. She said, I'm saving money to go to Paris. I said, are you praying about it? And she said, yes, mommy, I've been giving my tithes, and I've also been giving an offering. I said, okay. I didn't ask her, because what I'm trying to do, I'm pointing her to God. 
When she was 15, when she asked the question, I was already seeing 18 when she was leaving home. So we were praying, but we needed her to pray. Jesus cannot be just Jesus of mommy and daddy. We had to be intentional in making Jesus God of Levi, God of Nia. So I asked her, can you believe for it? By September, we haven't, her birthday is January 25th. By September of that year, we hadn't made anything. But Ray was asked to preach at a church in Plano, a little small church. And the pastor gave him a nice offering. So he comes to me and he says, hey, go ahead on and, and look up the tickets for Paris and, and put this toward it. So I'm like, ooh, boom. Out of the blue, it was probably two or three days later, in the mail, we get a reimbursement from our health insurance. I'm 51 years old. The health insurance have never sent a check to the house. So... Pastor Ray sees it. He says, put this with the, the other check. So I go to Nia. I've got the checks in the envelope. And I said, have you been praying about Paris? And she said, yes, mommy, I have. And I pulled the envelopes out. I said, I can tell. And she was like, no way. I said, yes, way. So my sister calls me. And I was like, girl, let me tell you about this God we serve. I'm just up in my room. I said, honey, we hadn't even made anything. And Ray went and preached at this little old church. They gave him a whole big check. And then the humanity sent us another check. So we had gone. My sister, who is a super single, she is not married. She doesn't have kids. She didn't want to have kids. But if you are single... I could probably introduce you. But anyway, I'm telling my sister all of this, and she said, oh, I just love my niece's pieces. I'm going to sell you $500 more. And just like that, from a Friday to a Sunday, the trip was paid for. And so when I took the envelopes out and I said, I could tell you've been praying the trip to Paris. See, we've been taking pictures and posing on Instagram, and y'all just don't know the kind of favor and grace for travel that we walk in. But my mother prophesied that over me. I remember the earliest time was sixth grade. My mother told me, Wendy, there's a whole world beyond Ypsilanti, Michigan. And if you want to see it, keep your legs closed and get your lesson. <laughs> and I did both for the most part. The rest is under the blood. <laughs> so when you see me out on Instagram, traveling and, and, and looking good, I want you to see the living, walking, miracle, prophetic come to being. Oh, you should have seen me in my green dress in Las Vegas, just cheesing and posing. That was grace. Somebody called us, called Ray. Pastor, would you and Pastor Winnie like to go to Las Vegas? Pastor Ray asked me, would you like to go to Las Vegas? I said, somebody flying us to Las Vegas? He said, yeah. I said, I would love to go to Las Vegas. So we got flewed out, if you know, you know. So I say that not to brag. I want to show you the benefits of this life in trusting God, the benefits in pointing your children. So while we in Las Vegas, my mom is with the kids right here in McKinney. But guess what is being impressed on my children's heart? Oh, if you trust God. If you just live mostly right, you don't even have to be perfect. That there are benefits in this walk with the Lord. And there was not, I, we were in Las Vegas in rooms with people just grinning. And I'm, I'm, I was asking the Lord, why am I here? Why am I here? Why are we here? We may have an internship connection for Levi. That might have been why we were supposed to be there in engineering. Because, you know, that's why I home, leave, homeschooled Levi some years ago. Uh, he was invited by his principal to the engineering STEM club without even applying for it. That's just prayer, y'all. It's just being able to be there for our kids. All right, we have a responsibility to raise our kids in the fear, meaning a reverence, not a terror, of fear of the Lord. Now, sometimes, I don't think we're in that culture, but uh, sometimes parents in meaning to do well have done wrong and have pointed, painted God in a picture of being mean and like he's playing whack-a-mole. As soon as you mess up, boom, he's just waiting to just whack you over the head when you mess up. When above all the things God is, he's a loving father. And so when we point our kids to them, him, and when we raise them to have a healthy respect for God, that when they mess up as they get older, it's not so much about how they're going to be in trouble with us. 
but there will be a conviction on the inside like, mm, I don't like the way that made me feel. I, I, I shouldn't do that again without you having to speak a word. Exodus 20, verses uh, 5 and 6, I'm reading from the New International Version. It says, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. This is meaning other gods. This is meaning the culture. You don't have Jesus, the secret alternative lifestyles that don't exalt God. Now, are there principles in there that we can use? There are principles, but those principles are in the word of God. In this new age culture, Jesus is not enough, but he is the only way to God the Father. So we have Jesus and crystals. Jesus, and I keep hearing this word, manifestation, manifestation. Oh, I manifested that. The word says, speak those things that be not as though they were. That is a level of faith is just perverted. There are laws established, spiritual laws that are established in the earth and you don't even have to be saved to reap the benefits. I don't know Oprah as a Christ alone follower, but is she wealthy? Yes, the Bible says God gives seed to the sower. Is Oprah a sower? Absolutely. She's going to build a school in Africa. She's going to give away wardrobes to people. She's going to give away cars through sponsorships. So guess what? She is reaping the benefits of a spiritual law. God gives seed to the sower. The girls that need to go to school in Africa don't care whether Oprah serves Jesus or not, just like whether you're a believer or not, that you are subject to the laws of gravity. There are laws that we will see people operate in that are just spiritual laws, but they can have just a little twist of perversion on them. Jesus and Jesus alone is what I'm encouraging. You shall not bow down to them, for I, the Lord your God, I'm a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of their parents. Remember, we just confessed over ourselves, it starts with me. Us being right. My granddaddy Levi used to say that because I had some kind of lie demon on me when I was a child. And I'm not even joking. I would just lie for no reason. My mother was not abusive. There was something to me, but I did get spanked. And I'm grateful for that. The Bible says that foolishness, folly is bound up in the heart of a child and the rod of correction shall drive it out. So it is okay to spank your children. If you have an issue with it and your little ones are little, this is what you can do. You get a wooden spoon. Draw a sad face on it, name him Mr. Woo Woo. And so when they act up, you just swat their behind not to hurt them. Boom, boom, make them sit in a time in. Don't do time out, depending on your child. If you have Mr. Woo Woo, Mr. Woo Woo can always be in the car or in a diaper bag. And when you start with that, that there are consequences to bad choices, the older they get, you won't have to spank them. But spanking is lawful and legal in the Bible. Not abuse, but spanking. Where was I going before I got to the spanking? Oh, lying, lie, lie, lie for no reason. This thing was about to drive my mother insane, and I don't mean that lightly. I would just go to school. I would look in the Sears catalog, and I would just go and tell my teachers that I had a canopy bed and a purple bike and just be talking all during class, so I'm already in trouble for talking in class, and then I'm talking and lying at the same time. And don't know why. And I would be afraid to get a spanking, but just lie. My mom said, did you do this? No, nope, it wasn't me. I could have cookies in my hand. Did you eat the cookie? Mm-mm, it wasn't me. So my mother, she, she spanked me, and she needed to. She also bought me a little book called The Boy Who Cries Wolf. And because I would lie so much, you know, my grandfather, when he'd get on the phone with me sometimes, he would say, my grandparents call me Pooh. He said, Pooh, I got to do right, so it'll be well with you. If I don't do right, it's going to fall down on you. You need to do right so it don't fall down on your children one day. This is where my grandfather got that from. The sin of your parents will go down to the third and fourth generations. That's why we need Jesus, because when we mess up and we do, we can go back and get it right and say, oh, Lord, please forgive me. Isaiah says, I, even I, remember your sins no more. 
I throw them as far as the east is from the west. You know, the east and west don't meet. This is why we need God. It says that your sin will fall down on your third and fourth generations to those who hate me, not to those who just mess up. The reason why we need to point our children to God is to show a love for him to those who hate me. But I'm showing love, verse 6 says, to a thousand generations to those who love me and keep my commandments. So with you doing the right thing day in and day out, your children to a thousand generations will be blessed. It doesn't mean that they won't have struggle. So when I look at my life, I know my mama did a whole lot right. Had to have had, because I am reaping that benefit. Again, this is supposed to be uplifting and challenging. There is now therefore no condemnation to them that are in Christ. Whatever is in your past, just say this quick prayer. Say, oh God, you can say it to yourself. You don't have to say it out loud. Oh Lord, just forgive me for what I've done. I repent of that right now. And I ask that you give me wisdom to follow you, that it be well with me and my children. In Jesus' name, amen. Poof, it's gone. Clean slate. And I'm not saying that in any kind of silly way. You confess your sins. God is faithful and just to forgive them. So when we mess up, that's all we have to do. Let's look at 2 Timothy 1, 5 through 7 in the message. Paul is writing to Timothy. And he's saying, when I pray for you, that precious memory triggers another, your honest faith. And what a rich faith it is. Paul is writing to Timothy. In the scriptures before, he was saying, oh, I'm praying for you. And as I pray for you, it triggers this memory in me. It triggers your faith, your honest faith that was passed down from your grandmother Lois to your mother Eunice and now to you and the special gift of ministry you received when I laid hands on you and prayed. Keep that ablaze. God doesn't want us to be shy with our gifts, but to be bold and loving and sensible. That's a word for us today. And the reason why we want to encourage mothers to bring their children up in the ways of the Lord, because we see the blessing generation after generation being handed down. We did raise. Now resource. Resource means to provide assets necessary for effective operation. So provide assets. We've talked a little bit. I've touched on that. Now what I want to present to you is the difference between compliance and character building. When you're parenting, when you start off, it can start off with a lot of compliance. I told you to sit down. I told you to stop. Don't do this. No. And it's necessary. You're putting up boundaries and keeping them safe. But as they get older, you've got to move out of compliance into character building. We grew up not in my house, but I grew up in that generation when it was like, you just do what I say because I said do it. That's compliance. You know that compliance only works while you're around. If we don't work on character building, character is the thing that keeps them when bad choices are presented. So if, for an example, I'm only talking about my business because I don't know your business. If, for instance, we were only parents of compliance, when Levi received the crazy report that he was going to go to the office, he may have felt that he was going to be in trouble. When you think you're going to be in trouble, what do you do? You keep secrets. You hide. You don't tell. If it was compliance, he could have had such a fear of being in trouble that he wouldn't have told us what was going on. But because by God's grace, we have just worked on character building, he knew it was going to be safe to come say something is going down at the school that I don't even know about. What had happened, let me tell you about this guy we serve. The day before, the reason why they hadn't pulled Levi in the office is because he had such a bad allergy attack. I had taken him to the pediatrician. I checked him out of school right after lunch. So when all of this was going down, he wasn't at school. That's why they hadn't talked to him. Everybody say grace. Because had they called him in, he would not have had parental support. They would not have asked for his phone to go through the text and be able to see what was going on. 
I was actually trying to get him into another pediatrician. They didn't take our insurance, so I ended up going, because had I gone to that pediatrician, we would have had an 8 a.m. He would have still been at school. So it's those little ways that God will keep you and protect your children, even when you don't know what is going on. Resource. Again, you've got to start off with compliance. You want them to do what you're asking them to do, but what you've got to move on to is the character building and explaining why. I don't come from that generation that does a whole lot of explaining why. I come from a generation, overall speaking, not necessarily in my house, but you just do what I say. My mother was a type of person, she's kind of got an engineering type mind. She's very meticulous, very, she was like, I'm asking you to do this because X, Y, Z. It wasn't up for debate, and she wasn't having conversation with us. She was just explaining, you need to do this because of this. So then we would have aha moments. You don't have to always explain things to kids, but as they're growing up, you want to build their character. You want to give them something that will keep them when you're not around. What my children, what will my children be as a result of my parenting? Again, this is not for condemnation. What will they be as a result of how I'm pouring into them? And so here's my last story. I'm about to close. Second Kings verses, I mean, chapter 4. So I'm going to tell you the story. I have all of the scriptures up there, but for the sake of time, I won't read them. So in Second Kings, we hear this. Okay, so I'm going to do like the girl on the internet. Okay, so boom. So there was this lady and her husband, and they didn't even have any kids, but then the prophet Elijah used to come through town, and they liked him. They knew he was a man of God. So this is what the lady said. She said, oh, honey, we should build a room for the man of God, and when he comes to town, he'll have a place to stay. The honey says, the husband says, yes, that's a great idea, honey. I think that that would be wonderful so we can build a room and whenever Elisha came to town he stayed at their house so because she was so hospitable Elijah asked her one day what can I do for you how can I pray for you and Elijah was with his man his armor bearer Gehazi and she said oh no Lord there's nothing that you can do and Lord not meaning God but being respectful to to, to the man of God and so Gehazi being the armor bearer says okay so Elijah they don't even have any kids so if they don't have any kids and there's nobody to keep up with their property, so let's do that. So Elijah calls the Shunammite woman to the door. She didn't even go to the threshold. The, 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 the scripture says she stood at the door. The man of God is in the room she built for him, and she says, yes, and he said, by this time next year, you'll have a child. She was like, nope, don't even play with me. I didn't ask you for nothing. I built the room because I just wanted you to be here and have a good place. I cannot get emotionally invested in that, so mm -mm, I'm not receiving that. The man of God said, by this time next year, you'll have a child. And guess what? She did because it was a word of the Lord. She had a child and everything was going on, and the child grew up, and one day the daddy was going out to the land to till the land, and the little boy said, oh, daddy, my head is hurting. So he told the servants, take the boy back to his mama. He's no good for work. So he went back to his mama. She had him on her lap, and she was rocking him, and she's like, like, oh, he's getting worse, he's getting worse. And while she was rocking him, guess what? He dies right there in his mother's arms. You know what the mother did? She put on her shoes. She got her cloth and she went out. She told her husband, hey, uh, where's the man of God now? I know he left the house last week, but where was he going to? Where is he? And he said, why would you go see? It's not time for a festival or anything. Why would you go see him now? She said, all is well. Speak those things that be not as though they were. She said, I just need to see the man of God. And so he said, well, he said, I think he's in the other town. So she told her servant, get on a donkey and you take me and do not stop for anything. And she went to him. The Bible says that when she saw Elijah, Elijah could see her up the road and he sent Gehazi, go ask her what's going on because the woman is coming. Gehazi said, what's going on? She was like, no, nah, player, I'm not even here for you. She went to the man of God. So then Elijah was like, oh, she got that kind of walk. So let me go and meet her. So he comes out to meet her and she fell at his feet. And she said, when you came to my house, I didn't ask you for nothing. You told me I'd have a son, and I had a son. And today his head was hurting, and he is dead. Why would you do this to me? Guess what Elijah said? He said, oh, sis, don't even worry about it. He said, Gehazi, go. She said, oh, no. She said, I will not leave you today. So then I... Elisha got his stuff, went. Gehazi put the staff on him. The boy's supposed to get up. He didn't get up. 
Elisha comes in. He lays on top of the boy, blows into him. He's praying, what is going on? The boy wasn't reviving. But after a while, Elisha leaves the room and he says, go in to your son. And he lived a long, full life. Resource. You know what that mama did? She took her son to the only person that could do something about it. That was God. Now, see, because Jesus hadn't come yet, you needed the priests and the prophets to intercede in order to make it to God. You resource your children. That boy will have a legacy for the rest of his life that he was dead, but his mama went to God and God raised him up. That is nothing that anybody could take away from that son. When they tease him at school on the playground, he will already know that he know that he know. You can say whatever you want. I got a praying mama. You better watch yourself. When your children are making choices that don't line up with you, number one, it does not indicate whether you're good or bad. And number two, you got to take it to the one that could do something about it, and that is God. The greatest resource you can ever give your child is a relationship with Christ. Decide today how you want to live. This is what I have decided. When I had Nia, this is what I decided I wanted my life to be. When I leave this world, there's only three things I want Nia and Levi to be able to say about me. Number one, my mommy loved God. I want them to full heartedly just know that. Number two, she trusted him. And number three, he was faithful to her. That's what I will, I give that to you. If you need it for yourself till you come up with something. When I leave the song, I want to leave a legacy before I die. That's the legacy I want to leave. I wish I was leaving a legacy where I had real long black hair and I was 35 pounds lighter and I was some great traveling preacher and all of that kind of stuff. But the legacy that I have decided way before today is that these are the only three things that matter for Nia and Levi to say, my mommy loved God. She trusted him. And I want my life to prove that God is real and he is faithful. Y'all don't have to say that about me, but if those two say that about me, then my living has not been in vain. My parenting has not been in vain. We've got to leave them a legacy of faith. I wanted to get into Moses' story, but I'm not going to get into it. It was a legacy of faith. Moses' mom's name was Jochebed. Jochebed. So what happened is Jochebed, okay, so boom. So Jochebed has this son. At the time, the Pharaoh was killing all of the boys, but she gives birth to a son. And so the godly uh, midwives decided not to kill him. So Jochebed keeps him. She was not worried about the edict, the law that had gone out from the Pharaoh, because she's like, I'm going to trust God. She was a Hebrew woman. And so she did all she could to keep him hidden, and then she made she was resourceful. She made a little basket and put some tar and pitch in it and sent it up the river and told his sister Miriam, go and watch this. Watch it, see what happens. The little uh, basket ended up at Pharaoh's daughter's house. So the Pharaoh's daughter took him out of the water. Moses means out of the water. And she raised him. After a while, he went back to his identity as a Hebrew. But why do I tell you this? Jochebed trusted God above the law of the land. She left Moses, started his life out with faith. So when we raise our children in the things of God, when we resource them, whatever that looks like for that particular child, guess what's inevitably gonna happen? You will have to release them. Release them to why God has called them release them out into this world, release them to make the choices that they want to ch choose, suffer consequences, and the whole time in the releasing, what you can do is trust God. Trust God. God will be faithful to you. As we prepare to release Nia, 
we are celebrating the opportunity we have to buy this building. But for the last 11 years, our children have watched us pray, watched us cry, watched us be hurt, watched us make mistakes. Last week when we sat the kids down at the kitchen table and told them about the opportunity of this building, Nia looked at me and she said, oh. she said, I'm so happy for y'all. She said, because I've seen your sacrifice. I've seen what you've done. And she said, I was asking God, is this stuff real? She said, I know I'm going to school but all you wanted was a building and I see what you do and I was starting to wonder mm, I don't know about this church thing <laughs> we have been praying we have been fasting some of you have been with us this entire 11 years could it be that Jesus will give us this building just because my daughter was having a crisis of faith that's how much he loves us. Can you imagine how devastating, I'm not talking about as pastors, how devastating it would be that little girl, I used to lie to my team lead, Lord forgive me, and tell her I have to go to the bathroom because sometimes when I was pregnant with Nia, I would just have an urge to pray. I would go into the bathroom and I just lay hands on myself. Oh God, I thank you that she'll never stray into the far country and that she'll serve you all the days of her life and go back to my classroom had no idea my daughter is serving day in day out beating us to church that she's been watching the whole time and it wasn't about whether we were good or bad parents guess what she was thinking mm, can I trust this God they keep talking about and so as we've walked this thing out as imperfect as we walked it out God is being faithful not just to Ray and Wendy He's being faithful to Converge Church. You all are in the fight with us. Your kids didn't have great children's ministries, but you're still here. Your youth weren't going to youth conferences, but you're still here. And all we've done is preached his name. And I want you to know you don't have to be perfect. Just stay faithful. Just hold on to him with all you've got. You know what I told my husband? I said, if they don't give us the building, we'll stand out in front of the street and preach because God didn't say for us not to. It is not dependent on the building. Are you called or not? And he said, yes, I am. I said, well, if they don't want to give us the building, they can keep that little ugly building. This is a beautiful building, but I was just talking because I was upset. But that's the kind of resolve you have to have. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, even if he doesn't do what I need him to do as a mother. Even if I am going to trust you, this place is not our home. We're just passing through. We're just passing through. But I'm telling you, mommy, if you can just trust him. Trust him with everything you have. Even when those kids aren't doing right, trust them. And you remind God, God, you told me from your word that you would keep them. God, you told me from your word, seed time and harvest. God, you told me with your word for a thousand generations, if I served you, that my children would be blessed. And I can guarantee you this. God is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent. He will do exactly what he said. Oh Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be mothers. Lord, we thank you for the gift that you have given us and Lord, help us. We repent when we've gotten it wrong, but oh God, we choose today right now to walk in the grace of your goodness and of your mercy and your calling to mother these children, Lord. For every prodigal son, Lord, right now we call them home. For every mother that is just fighting with everything she has just to get up in the morning, Lord, we thank you for the grace and that you will give it to her. Lord, we thank you that the days ahead will be sweet days because you are a mighty God. 
Lord, we thank you that you will give us wisdom as mothers beyond our age. And our children would not be great to make us look great, but our children would be great to show the magnanimous of who you are, oh God. Let our lives and the lives of our children be a display of your amazing grace. Lord, let the wake of our lives disturb everything that doesn't belong to us, but also part away to your goodness and your glory. We love you, Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this building. We thank you for our pastor. We thank you for everyone here. We thank you that you are our God and that there is none like you. It is in your precious, mighty name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Awesome. Stay up here with me, baby. Come on, let's give it up for Pastor Wendy. Awesome. Awesome word. Timely word for every woman every daughter, every mother in the house. Come on, y'all. You may be seated in the house. I, I gotta do this. I would be remiss if I didn't do it. Listen, I'm so proud, uh, peacock proud of my mocha princess. Come on, somebody. She's a savage, righteous, holy, anointed. Oh, no, 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 let me, let me, let me. But uh, awesome word, baby. Thank you so much of, for reminding us uh, that every day we live, uh, we leave a wake behind us, that we create a disturbance uh, for good and unfortunately sometimes for evil. Uh, but not for evil. No, no, no. We're, we're not leaving it for evil, but we, we could. We could. Um, you know, uh, Pastor Wendy uh, uh, brought the kids up here, man, and, and just even everything you spoke over them, the words of blessing, man, just really blessed me and I started to tear up and and you just shared. Jewel. Jewel. It's time. It's time. Okay. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh. That is my Oma. That is Pastor Ray's mother, who is with Jesus right now. That picture was taken almost 22 years ago. That's Pastor Ray, the Pape, and the Oma. My mom is still here and she's still making waves. But we live in the wake of the Oma. And I didn't want this day to pass. She was a good mother-in-law to me. When we went through, probably 18 months into our marriage, the Oma called my mother and they prayed for us together. And so I wanted to honor her, honor her legacy, honor her memory, honor her goodness to our family. She was such a good woman when she went home to be with the Lord. My mother flew to Ohio with us just to watch the children. That's how good she was. And so I would be remiss if I didn't honor the legacy, the love, the wake of Elizabeth Wisu Harmon. I pulled that picture out because we don't have that many pictures of her and I wanted my own special picture. For those of you who are new for us, we lost the Oma suddenly. It was February 3rd. It was Super Bowl Sunday a few years back, almost four years ago. She went to church. She set up the communion table with the pastor's wife and she sat down. And the best we can describe it is it had an aneurysm. And we trusted God for seven days. She's with Jesus right now. But on this Mother's Day, I don't know how hard it is for Pastor. 
And so late last night, I sent this picture to Jewel. And I said, can we do this? And I cried for her last night because she believed with us for this building, not this building, a building. So last night when I was putting the Mother's Day gifts together, I was a little bit sad. I almost called my mama, but my mama texted me. I was like, God, you are so good. So I pulled it together. So as we cry, I'm going to give you some more minutes. When you leave, you're going to get a gift. In one of your gifts, it's going to be a handkerchief and a tube of lip gloss to all the ladies, not just the mothers. And what I want this to represent, I used to tell the ladies when we first started out at City Church, Dominique remembers this, I would tell them, girls, keep a pack of Kleenex and a lip gloss in your back pocket. So when life happens, you can have a real ugly cry, get your face together, put on some lip gloss and look cute. Well, honeys, we have graduated from Kleenex to handkerchiefs. <laughs> Because Kleenex leave a little residue and you can't really be that cute. So it's a symbol. It's a part of who we are. And we've had, we've shed quite a few tears at Converge Church the last couple of months. Still crying some tears, some happy, some sad. And so this Mother's Day, I want to leave you with this, a part of who I am. When life happens like it's happening right now, it's okay to cry. Get you a good old ugly cry. Wipe your face off. Put on some lipstick, some lip gloss, shake it out, and continue with the wake behind you, blazing a trail. Amen. All right. Um, we got to let y'all go. Um, but just seeing my mom's picture up there just brought a, a flood of uh, memories. I know Pastor Wendy said a lot of things about the legacy we leave and the wake we leave behind. One of the things I'm so grateful for mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that my mom gave me was a legacy of faith and learning to trust God. When you give in everything and nothing seems to be working. And I still be, I remember being in an ICU and my mom being in a coat. And Pastor Wendy called me. She said, Ray, how you doing? And the only thing I could think of was, who's going to pray for me now? Because I knew my mom paced the floor for hours. Not just praying for me, but praying for all her children. And I knew I'd never see her again. And all I could think of was who was going to pray for me like my mom prayed for me. But I know that none of what's happened over the last two years is by accident. I know that even now, my mom who prayed so much for our church, that God would give us a notable miracle. That even though she's not here with us, I know, I know she's looking down from heaven. I know it. And she's rejoicing with us. And if there's anything I can say to you is, as much as it rests with you, give your children the gift of faith. Even Pastor Wendy talking about Nia having her own crisis of faith. I still remember when she was little and we had to make sacrifices. And one time she came and asked us for something. I don't remember what it was. And, just, and I said, well, Nia, we'll just have to believe God for that. And Nia looked me in the eyes and said, Dad, do we have to trust God for everything? Why can't you just go and buy it? And I remember the sacrifices we made as a family. 
and I know the sacrifices you made when you could have been anywhere else. Going to a mega church with all the bells and whistles. But you stood with us. And just Friday, we executed the contract for this building and already transferred the earnest money. And so our story may not be like everybody else's story. It's been long, longer than we would have scripted it. It's been harder, but every moment has been worth it. And listen, I invite you. Uh, I didn't realize how many people hadn't seen the entire facility. It's 26,000 square feet, uh, fully loaded. Uh, and so I encourage you before you leave, if you have time, just tour the facility, the student ministries area, the children's area, all the things that we have prayed and asked God to do for us these years he has done so why don't we stand with us as we dismiss you because what we're standing in is a miracle of God a notable miracle and for everybody who's been waiting on God God is faithful and God is true so with hands lifted toward heaven I pray God that you would bless us and keep us that father you would cause your face and your countenance to shine upon us that God you would be gracious to us gracious to us and give us peace in Jesus name and everyone said amen and amen God bless you happy Mother's Day and we'll see you next week